Okay, let me see here. Oh, huh? well, I guess I have to do something here, folks, before I... You do not have, have permission to live stream? Are you out of your mind? I'm, it's ridiculous. Hold on a second. Let me just do this. And uh, sometimes if I uh, if I set this up too early, uh, I, I have that problem. So let's see here. Let's go to live on Facebook. Okay, there we go. And now I'm going to go put this in here. Let me see here paste okay and then we go down here and we go live come here come here yeah i hate this okay there we go there we go all righty now the meeting is going see what happens sometimes if i uh if i i if i try to set up my facebook too soon too early uh i run into problems so anyway we, but we didn't run into problems now, so we're fine. Uh, and uh, we're here. Hi, how are you? See, it takes a little time for us to get on, but we get on, right? And then I have to look back here because I want to make sure that it's uh, going out on Facebook. Uh, let me see here. This is one more thing I got to do. Uh, this is what happens when you're running the whole show yourself. There we go. And there's me talking. Okay. Anyway. And we got a bunch of people all ready to go here, okay? So we find Rick Sheckman is there and Charlene S. and Andrew Deutsch and Edward Berger, uh, who, of course, always has to say... That's right. Yeah, right. <laughs> How are y'all? Uh, and Paula, we need your visual and your audio, yeah, yeah. And well, Marjorie should be joining us soon. We'll probably have other people joining us as well. Hello to all of you. How have you been? Good. 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 You all look healthy, I think. Oh, belated happy birthday. Oh, belated happy birthday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We uh we had our birthday uh yesterday. Um uh and uh you know what happens? I'll tell you what the, the problem with birthdays are if you're on Facebook. Okay. Uh, I get about every year 400 birthday greetings. <laughs> now, I, I'm not leading myself to believe that I have 400 friends. About the only friend I have is on this panel, and it's Rick, and that's about it. That's my friend, right? Jeez, thanks. We do everything we can to keep him alive, because if he goes, I have no friends. So um, I know I know it's a very selfish reason. Well, you got Marjorie; she's a friend as well as yeah. I, I, you know, I never, I never stopped to think about that. I mean, really, I mean, I, I say you're my best friend, Rick, but really, Marjorie probably is technically. What are you talking about? Probably. What's Marjorie? <laughs> Thank you, Paula. Well, no, but she doesn't come in the qualification of friend. She's wife. She's a relation. Well, does that make her an adversary? No, I didn't say that. I didn't say she was an adversary. I don't think. Are you, Marjorie? You're the one that's calling it. Yeah. Anyway, so she. So anyway, so you get all these all these greetings, and I would love to be egotistical enough to think that I've got 400 people who really care about me. Yeah. But it's 400 people who all got nudged by Facebook. It's Alex Bennett's birthday. Want to send him a greeting and you a know. gift. Huh? And a gift. Is there a gift thing there? Oh, yeah. There's a thing where you can send you a gift, meaning they're making money off it. Wait a minute. No, or, do nobody or, donate, or donate to a charity that you choose. Nobody, yeah, that's what I do. Nobody has to spend 90, $99. It's a card. Nobody sent, <laughs> nobody sent me a gift. Out of those 400 people, nobody, not even some of you guys who are here, sent me a gift. Oh, I didn't send you a gift, but I sent wishes. Huh? I don't send anybody gifts. I donate to charities if they have one they specify. But uh -huh. well, I have a, I have a charity. I do specify me. <laughs> the, 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 the Bennett Foundation. The Bennett Foundation. Uh, you can for pay for it. girls. You can pay for it in Gabnet bucks or uh, uh, Gabnet NFTs. <laughs> you know. Oh boy. 
Well, if you make those NFTs, do yourself a favor and don't steal the images to Photoshop your head on. Somebody's getting sued. Oh, really? Did they? Is that what they did? Almost yeah, all of them it. were were not public domain images, and the guy who did the photoshopping took them from people who are not supporters. Oh my There's one god! One of them from a, clo- a clothing company and a bunch of different things. He's probably going to end up being sued. Well, the thing with the with the rays coming out of the eyes came from the boys, didn't it? The show on uh, Amazon. I think so. I yeah. Know. Yeah. 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 What a douche. <laughs> I'm sure because he knows a lot about comics. Shaggy could probably figure out where some of the other ones come from. Where did where did the cowboy come from? Out of a, a catalog for men's clothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God, I and, wish and I, no, not one that I have in my in my uh, catalog. <laughs> no. I wish I had paid ninety nine dollars for those. Jeez. Well, you know, the people the people who bought them have the right to sue him because they bought something that doesn't have a copyright that he stole the cop you know from a copyright, and the people with the copyrights can sue. <sighs> you know something? Uh, I mean, I hate to say this, but uh, he's going to wind up with no money. <laughs> Good. He yeah. already has no money. Yeah, yeah. pretty yeah. much. Yeah, you know. I Every mean, time someone sues him, the court says, "Get in line." Yeah, they haven't released his tax tax uh, uh, tomorrow. Oh, really? Really? It's going to the committee? Well, it's going to the committee, but that doesn't mean they're going to release them. No, no I, I don't think, think they're won't. releasing it to the public. Well, somebody will leak it, but I don't think it's being publicly released. Oh, somewhere somebody's going to leak it. There's no question Eventually, about it. Eventually, yeah. Oh, probably sooner rather than later. You know, so. Uh, but uh, oh, stop me. <laughs> oh God, Andrew, you you use your you use your that as a weapon, really. Not me. Yeah. Well, anyway, so we don't have as many people as we use, usually have here, but I it's a it's a good group of people, and uh, uh, but anyway, so we went out. We had what we had uh, dinner. Dinner. Uh, Alex's dinner, and then. Uh, Rick, I have a, a we have a friend, Rick and I, uh, the, the whiners. I know that sounds like some kind of a name you use on a Saturday <laughs> SNL skit, but um, Stephen Laurie Weiner, they're very nice people, okay. Yeah. And I've known, I've known actually Steve longer than I've known Rick because Steve introduced me to Rick, yeah, 1977, 78. Something that was like your that. birthday present, right? Yes. Yes, you were. Because you wanted to meet me or something. So he arranged it because he knew me or something. I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah. Well, I I, probably want to wipe the thought out of your mind, actually. You know, the day I met Alex Bennett will not live in my memory. Please let it go. (laughs) Anyway, so. So um, um, she she happens to be I mean, he's a nice guy, too, but she happens to be a gem. Okay. Yeah. So today she writes me something and she says, I know we're a little bit late on this, but we should all get together and have a lunch to celebrate your birthday. I said, sure. So now she's going to go arrange to, you're going to have to come into the city, Rick. Yeah, I yeah. know. Yeah. You know, but she, when they serve food, they don't just serve food. Oh, it's, they? it's a massive table. Of well, food. first of all, she orders from, everywhere <laughs> and so then she orders a lot of stuff table. from everywhere yeah and and we sit there and it's like well the first of course we have all these things and there's chicken liver and there's lox and there's <laughs> and there's soup and there's yeah, yeah. You know, uh, uh, okay I, okay We're, the main course is coming here's the chicken here's the roast the, i mean on and on and on and I'm sorry, at my age, I don't, I can't eat that much, you know. I so just anyway, gained five pounds from your description. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have gained five pounds from last night because I, I had, uh, I had a lot of stuff that was not good for my waistline. But you know, it was my birthday, so what the hell? Uh, they had a mac and cheese at this French restaurant. <laughs> mac and cheese at a French restaurant, right? Mac and cheese, it was just, it was killer. It was truffles. It was mac and cheese with truffles. 
Yeah. Oh, it was, it was delicious. Delicious. And then I had to, I had some beef bourguignon, which wasn't as good as the as the macaroni and cheese. And then for my my uh what do you call it? My uh uh dessert, because we had to order dessert so they could sing happy birthday to me. Okay. Uh, and, and they do this spectacular thing. Let me show you if I can. Where, what happened to my, oh, there it is, photos. There we go. There you go. See that? <laughs> they have this big, it's like a flare that they put in the, in the, in the dessert. So, see it there? Okay. So that was our, that was our little gathering last night of Marjorie and I. And uh, oh, thank you, dear. It was a wonderful meal. It was good. And it's always nice to spend another year with you, mainly because that means I'm still alive. Yeah. You know, another <laughs> selfish reason, you know. But then uh, I turned uh, 79 yesterday, which is uh, pretty good, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Everybody going to be around for my 80th birthday? Sure. Anyway. As long as you are. As long as I am. <laughs> mm. But anyway, hello, Mandy. Hi. Mandy down there in uh, Georgia, um, which I, she loves it. You love it in Georgia, don't you? That's a, it's a nice place to live. I've ever known. Hmm? All I've ever known. All you've ever known? You, yeah. you, you were born and raised there? And it, yeah, Metro Atlanta native even. Oh, wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. So how's the new house working out for you? Good. It's great. It's yeah. Great. Yeah. And it's 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 a smaller home, right? How many square Very, feet? About 1,090, I think. Really? Oh. Yeah. Two bedrooms, two baths. Yeah. I have to, I've, I have to figure, this is 2,500 square feet, this apartment. So I have to somehow always figure when you say, you know, 1,000 square feet. What would that look like? And basically be my bathroom. <laughs> Think of a like 1960s little ranch with a carport. Yeah. That's what it has. That's what it looks like. That's nice. That's yeah. nice. Is this the first time you've owned a house? Or no, you, you probably um, by yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you and your okay. husband. And this is not bragging, trust me, because I did not like this. At one point, my husband and I and our children lived in a 10,000 square foot house. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I mean, that and uh, uh, uh. really, yeah. My husband, my ex husband was a builder, so he built this huge house. Oh, I see. Okay. It was probably the house, it's the house is probably like 8,000, and then we had a detached garage that had an apartment over it. So, all together, it was about 10,000. Yeah. I was talking about, about, about Shecky's house to Marjorie the other day. And I was telling him that it was uh, Owen Lynn Frisco's calling. Let me bring him in. And uh, we and we were we were talking about your place, Shecky. How 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 many yours is like a half acre or something like that? I think the entire property is not the exact not the house. So if you sold that, they'd probably just chop it up into two different lots, right? Or they would make a fifteen room house out of what's here now. Yeah, and because so, the Jewish community loves to buy corner houses, knock them down, and build these massive, you know. Oh, you are a corner house, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They make these McMansions, you call them. You know. Yeah. Uh, but they build right out to the street. You know, like you know how much grass I have around the house. Right. It all goes away. Yeah, the house only takes up a small footprint of the entire property, really. You know, you got a lot of grass around it. A lot of grass. I have um, the side yard, the front yard, the backyard. Yeah. But if he ever sells it, I'm sure it'll get torn down because people don't have taste. It's also a 1940s house, so it's going to go. Yeah. So it, it, they'll they'll tear it down. I mean, the property, the, probably the land itself is is worth. Well, that's where the value is. Yeah, yeah. And you were saying that if you ever, you know, sold the house or you died and it went wherever, that the, immediately they would tear it down and put up something else. Oh, yeah. It's just not modern enough. And also, you know, old um, plumbing, 
whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that that's probably the biggest problem is anybody who would take it over probably would have to improve the plumbing and do things like you that. You know, they put solar panels on the roof and they would, yeah, whatever. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that would be nice. You know, I mean, I, I think most houses today are being built with solar panels on the roofs. Being built with, but yeah. To go back and retrofit. Oh, them. you would want to retrofit your electricity to solar panels. No, no. But uh, it's a, I like your house. It's a sweet little house, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. And, and it fit the neighborhood for the times. Yeah. The houses that are still here from my era, that era, are to me very nice. I have I haven't noticed it near you. Have they been? Uh, have they torn down and rebuilt? Because I haven't noticed anything. Oh yeah. I mean, uh, on other streets, but I mean, on your. Oh. Not on between one eighty eighth and one ninety third, but no. on the other side of Radnor, yes. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so that uh, so, but uh, but how how big is the actual footage of your house? I forget. I have the I have the plans, but. I can't remember right this second. Probably at least 2,500 square feet. Oh, yeah, more than that, I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's very nice. Very nice. Uh, unfortunately, it's all filled with DVDs and comic books. And, and crap. And crap. You need to get a she shed like I had to get. A what? Yeah, a T shed. Yeah, but you see, he can't put that, he couldn't put that stuff in a T shed. Because he has it would to get protect, moldy. He it would get moldy. He has to protect it from you know, the, the elements. So, right. you know, like you, you keep a lot of your stuff in the basement. Don't you have it humidified down there or something? I have a humidifier in the basement. Yeah. I often wonder what happens if you buy a humidifier and then you buy a dehumidifier <laughs> and you put them in the same room. As long as long as you don't put instant coffee in the microwave, you won't time travel. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I often wondered about that. I mean, would they just cancel each other out, or would it start raining or well, something? Well, you wouldn't have both running at the same time. Well, I would. <laughs> I want to see what happens. <laughs> you ever have pasta and antipasta? <laughs> <laughs> At the same time? Yeah. Yeah, I did once. My stomach almost exploded. There you go. No. How about you know? a, bo a body and an antibody? <laughs> in fact, <laughs> in fact, they discovered that that's the way they're going to create cold fusion. Yeah. Pasta and antipasta together. Things yeah. like that. I think it requires gazpacho to get the cold part. But. Yeah. Now, the other problem that I have with all these birthday greetings is what do I do with them? I think they disappear. You just do a mass, like, thanks, everyone, for my birthday wishes. Yeah, didn't even respond to mine. Thanks a lot. Yeah, really. Oh, yeah. Well, I, you know, I did respond. I, I did respond to certain people. Yeah. But, but they were people that I hadn't talked to in 20 years. You know, <laughs> uh, um, one of them was May Pang. Anybody know who May Pang is? Mm -hmm. It's what's her name's widow. What's his name's widow? Um, no, wasn't it the other no, the no. other Yoko Ono? It was the other yeah. Yoko Ono? Yeah. It was the one that went out to California with John because, and in fact, Yoko said, "Go with him, make sure he doesn't get into trouble." And they wound up having an affair. Uh, and I knew May back in the day, and she sent me a birthday greeting, and I went, "Well, that's nice." You know, I haven't talked to her in a long time, so I'll mention that. But Len Lafrisco, come on, Len. You know, did I reply to yours, by the way? You did. Yep. You replied to mine. Yeah. And I replied to Shex, Shecky's. Yeah. Okay. So, I appreciate it. Thank you. You deleted mine. <laughs> I didn't delete yours. What, what were you going to say, Mandy? I said I don't rate for a reply. Me either. Oh, I, I don't rate either. It wasn't that. I just, I got 400 of these goddamn <laughs> things. <laughs> and you're lucky I even saw yours. <laughs> you know. Uh, but Charlie, you sent me one, didn't you? Did I say anything back? No. Okay. So don't feel bad. I, I avoided him, too. You yeah. avoided me, too. <laughs> <laughs> and she paid for dinner. 
Yeah, I bought, I bought I bought you lunch this year, so I get a reply. That's nice. <laughs> All I know is I wake up every morning and I look over in the bed next to me and I go, "Oh my God, was I that drunk last night?" Oh, oh. 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 don't worry. Imagine, imagine what she's thinking. I had <laughs> sex with an old lady. Oh yeah, what she's thinking here? Look at this. You know. Anyway. Um, so, uh, uh, oh, uh, Shecky, I, I watched the uh, Fablemans. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. I loved it. What is wrong with you people? <laughs> I thought it was a great movie. It was just it's okay. okay. And you know why you like it? Because it's very Jewish. <laughs> it's just like, a, uh, who cares? No, that's not, that wasn't it at all. It I thought the... I it thought, was, it, you know, what it reminded me of. It reminded me of ET. That that that, that I that, hated that. ET. So oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Fable yeah. Men's, in case you don't know, is the Steven Spielberg movie that he made about his youth or myth. I, most of that stuff was him. I mean, it, it, it's by the fact it's called the Fable Men's. I didn't know ET. Well, the word know. fable. Yeah. And years ago, I have a video of him telling this story about the time he met John Ford. And uh, John Ford had him get up and look at these paintings that were on the wall. And he said, what do you see? He says, I see a bunch of Indians uh, camping or whatever. And he said, no, what's, what's there? He says, where's the horizon? He says, oh, it's down here. He goes, okay, go to the next painting. What was, and, he, and, and he told this story. And then finally, he said, now, what, do, what, what look at the third paintings. Where's the horizon? He says, in the middle. He says, when the horizon is in the middle, the shot is shit. <laughs> you know, the horizon should either be at the top or the bottom. And so at the end of the movie, at the very, am I spoiling this? I thought this was a, br a very nice piece. He, you see the kid walking down through these canyons of a movie studio. He's at Universal, theoretically. Yeah, Universal, theoretically. And the camera doesn't follow him. It just lets him go. And then all of a sudden, it shifts where it is. Because it was because the, the horizon was in the middle. And I thought that was brilliant. That, that I thought, was the nice touch. Didn't you, Shecky? Yeah. That was the nice touch. Scene. The rest of the film, hey, it's there are things like, you know, him being... It's Ozzy and Harriet. You people have no soul. No, what do you mean I have no soul? I just cried at the end of a TV show. <laughs> no, no, I, Marjorie will tell you, I get misty, don't I? Much so. You know, uh, who's that that just walked into your place there, Charlie? They're working in my bathroom. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought it was somebody who was going to come in and hit you over the head. <laughs> you know? you should eat, eat more fiber, Charlie. <laughs> Quick, look behind you, Charlie. Well, yes, have, you, have you seen this new Stallone show? The uh, Yeah, the, Hulsa King? Yeah. Yeah. Are you enjoying it? I'm enjoying yeah. it. I'm Mark watching it because I can sit next to Alex and watch it, but it, it sucks. It's, it's, it's surprising. I just, I, I, the character is just so ridiculous. Just and goes he's into such town. A bad actor. He's it's, such a bad, bad actor. Uh huh. I don't think so. I, I don't think so. I like Stallone. I like Stallone. He's, right, right, Mike. I think, I think, he, I think he's okay. You know, uh, um, he, um, this show. I think I, I'm enjoying it. Marjorie, not so much. He doesn't want to like it because it's Stallone. Okay. He sucks, Alex. He made one good movie in his entire life. Number um, one. Yeah, death know, race I disagree 2000. with that, but all right. <laughs> you, you know, this is the first time in his history as an actor. You're not going to believe this that he never that he ever played a gangster. It doesn't matter. That's not true. He, he kind of did in Rocky. He was a gangster in Death Race back in seventy. Oh, 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 yes, you're right. And yeah. Rocky, he was a collector. That was that horrible movie. <laughs> I love Death Race. Too. Did you? Yeah. 
Oh, I yeah. love Death Race. What two thousand? I think. No, that was yeah, later. Frankenstein, man. Uh, yeah, he played, but he played. Uh, um, um, I can't even remember the name of the character. But he's was it Frankenstein? Like, or is that the? Oh other no, one? Frankenstein was the lead character. That oh, was that was yeah. Sorry, that was John Carradine. Yeah. Anybody know the movie we're talking about at all? No. Mm-hmm. Oh. All the women. All the women are going. No, I don't know that. You know I, I want to you know what I want to know what movie Marjorie thinks is the only movie he did a good job in. Copland. Oh, you were going to say Copland. Oh, I was sitting in my pocket. I, I, I saw, thought you were going to say Rocky. And I'm like, no, what about Copland? Copland? But then you said Copland. So there yeah. you go. No, I love Cop- Copland. Cop- Copland was a good movie. Yeah. Was yeah. it Rocky one he won an Oscar for or was it nominated for? He won an He's Oscar. not good enough no. to get nominated. No, wait a minute. He, he won an Oscar, I think, for the screenplay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously, well, I mean, they thought that was good. I mean, it was talent. What there. he did is he wrote he wrote Rocky and they passed the movie around. And a lot of studios were looking at it and saying, this is a good idea. It's a good script. Uh, uh, who can we get to star in it? And he said, well, you're not going to get anybody to star in it. I wrote it for me. If you want the movie, you got to put me in it. And a lot of studios rejected it because they just didn't see him as, you know, anybody right. they wanted to bank on. He was machine gun in Death Race, by the way. Machine gun. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But, uh, and he was very good in Death Race, by the way. Very funny. But anyway, so uh, Death Race was a movie that was based on the premise. Do you ever have this premise about, uh, oh, hey, if you hit that old lady while we're driving down the street, that's 30 points? Oh, my gosh. You know, you ever say that, ever play that game? Yeah. This is a movie about that, where they have a a race between... Uh. Uh, New York and California or wherever, and and they they get a point for all the people they kill. It was know? one of these things like Hunger Games to please the people. They have the death race every year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I thought it was a very good pick. That, what was the other one? Uh, rollerball. Yeah, so same era. Yeah, but let's the, make the let's make the sport more dangerous every time they play. It. The death race was Corman, Roger yeah. Corman. I yeah. I don't think he directed. I'm trying to remember who directed it. And he, it was a. I thought it was a. It was a fun little film. It was one of the better films of the day. I thought, but you know, wasn't he in Demolition Man also? Yeah, he uh, sure was. Yes, yes. Paul Bartel was the director of uh, of Death Race two thousand. Okay. Um, right. I also thought Sylvester Stallone was incredible in First Blood. Now, First Blood was shot right close to where I live, but I love that movie. The first for the first Rambo movie, first yeah, movie. yeah, yeah, that's the way you have to describe it because otherwise people won't. Know. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you mean what? the demographic for First Blood wasn't women? <laughs> oh, man. That's like the vet coming home and being misunderstood, yeah. and oh, I love that. Story. Yeah, no, it was. I thought it was. I thought it was basically a very good film. You know, they got crazy after the first one, though. Right. Yeah. What well, what happened with all all those things is you take Rambo. He was a good character in First Blood. He was then being chased by the cops. He fights off the cops and manages to decimate an entire police department and whatever, you know. And then, um, but he's the hero of the piece, and it really was a good film. It was a good film on several different levels. And then they make the second one, and Rambo becomes a cartoon character. Yes, you know, yes. let it go. Yeah, yeah, but uh, but anyway, so she doesn't like Stallone, so she doesn't like Tulsa King. Tulsa King, Tulsa King, Taylor Sheridan is doing Tulsa King. He's also doing two other shows that are on the air right now: Yellowstone and nineteen. 19- 3023, which was incredible. We love my wife and I yeah. love that one. Yeah, yeah, it's very good. Yeah, it, it, it's they've done these the series. It was it was 1883, and now it's 1923. With Helen Maron, it, it's all about the Dutton yeah. family and their ownership of the of the Yellowstone Ranch, and you know what went on in the various eras with it. And uh, I uh, I thought that this show it's uh, Harrison Ford and uh, Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren. She, she is standout. She is just oh, yeah. standout. And Harrison Ford's okay, you know. Harrison Ford again. You want to talk about somebody who's not a great actor? Harrison Ford is not a great actor. There are there are two kinds of people who star in films. I, I call them they're actors, 
And then there are reactors. And, and Harrison Ford's a reactor. Stallone's a reactor. You know, they have a style. They have a, a way of being that people go to the movies to see Harrison Ford. They go to the movies to see Sylvester Stallone. They don't go there to see them play somebody that's a far reach from who they are. You know. Stallone can't. You, you say Stallone can't, but you named a movie where he did. So obviously one movie, he, Alex, one. Obviously he can. I mean, in this show, I think he gets emotional and does a good acting oh job. Oh, my God. Give me a <laughs> you know something? As she gets older, as she gets older, she is less and less tolerant of stuff. I mean, do you know... <laughs> That's my girl. What was the I think first you helped her along in that department, Alex? What was the first movie we ever went to? And you enjoyed it. Yeah. I what, did. No, what was the first movie? It was one of two. Because <laughs> there were two movies we saw. It was right? actually it was a it was a it was a, a Chinese um kung fu style movie. Yeah, that you was loved it. Was it. You was loved it. Was it Crouching it. Tiger? No, 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 no. This was, I can't remember what it was now. Uh, I, it would take me time to go look it up and so on. And the second movie, and you loved it too, was, um, what, what is it? The Commander So-and-So in the t- World of the Future? What, what, what's the name of that movie? Um, that was good. Buckaroo oh. Bonsai? No, 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 no. It was, it was a Captain So-and-So Captain in the, the World, World of Tomorrow. Tomorrow. That was great. Oh. Yeah. And it was it was great. But you if I if I want to even try and get you to go to a film like that today, you wouldn't go. Oh, that's not for me. I don't want to watch that. You know, so she, half the stuff that I'd like to have her watch with me. Um, for instance, Shecky, if you were to say of television shows that are out right now that you've seen recently this year, what one, what ones would you recommend people watch? Well, I just started one on Apple, the name of which I can't remember about MI5s. Mm. Yeah, we were watching. Echo something? Yeah, Echo. No? No. no um, let me see. If I can but you would recommend something like Titans, right? Oh, yeah, Titans, Doom Patrol. Doom Patrol, I would absolutely re- recommend because it's very funny, you know. What are you holding that up for? A little Starry Night action going on there. Yeah. Oh, um, I was looking to see the name of that show on Apple that I watched. Yes. Yeah. Afternoon. Is that is that your uh, your iPad yeah. case? The older one. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's uh, very Starry cool. Night. Yeah. Where'd you get that? At the Van Gogh Amazon. <laughs> Amazon. Wow, I'm gonna have to get one of those. That's lovely. But anyway, um, uh, it, it, you know, so I, I can't I can't get her to even try stuff today, you know, like there's a, a good show, I think, coming on that I could I, I will recommend in advance, because if it's as good as the video game uh, and let me explain it to you in a second, it will be a great series. And it's called uh, The Last of Us. It's coming on. HBO Max on the 15th of next month. And I play the game, The Last of Us. But the great thing about that game is there is an incredible story enmeshed in the whole game. Most games, you know, it has a relatively thin, bare plot. And then you do this and you go to this place and that place. And this one, you really wait for what they call the cutscenes, where they have, and a lot of them have very dramatic impact. And it, it, do you know the game, uh, Mike? Yeah, my kid plays it like crazy. And do you know what I'm talking about? Very much so. Yeah, yeah. it's not like your normal game. No. And, and when they've said, oh, we're making Tomb Raider into a movie, I'm going, like, hell. No, the game that. itself is an interactive movie. It, it's like a movie first yeah. and, a, and a game second. Yeah. And so this is going to play very well as a plot, you know. And, um, it's about the world of the future, you know, where where we've been decimated by everybody. There's a there's a zombie plague that has plagued the whole nation, 
And then there's this girl, this guy who has lost his daughter 20 years or late earlier uh, to the beginning of this whole plague. And then there's this girl they want him to take and take to California because she's immune. So she has antibodies and he's got to get her there. And he doesn't want to, he doesn't like the girl. He doesn't want to do the girl because he's lost his daughter. And it has a very heavy, dramatic tone to it. And uh, I think it's going to be terrific. And the guy who did Chernobyl for HBO is directing it. So how bad can it be? You know, so, but will I get Marjorie to watch it? Well, I I'll said I would watch it. I watch said I would watch the first one. Yeah. And, and, and I know what you're going to say at the end of it. That's eh, not for me. Okay, what's wrong with that? Yeah, she says that about everything I'd like to get her to watch. And many times when I forced her to watch stuff, eventually she went, hey, that was pretty good. You know. I think you just described marriage to a T. <laughs> <laughs> right? You and your wife don't agree on stuff? Yeah, my yeah but, but usually when she asks me to get into something begrudgingly by the end of it, I'm like, all right, I get it. Yeah, well done. And vice versa. But yeah. many times we never get to the agreeing to even start with each other. But yes. Yeah. yeah. Who got you to watch Pinky Blinders, Alex? <sighs> okay. Go. You know, stop the watches right twice a day. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, the reason I couldn't watch Pinky Blinders, let me explain something to you. You turn on the subtitles. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Nothing wrong with that. Because I couldn't understand a word these guys were saying. But when I when I put on the subtitles, I started watching the whole thing, right? And there I read something the other day that a lot of people are watching TV with subtitles now. Me. Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. the way they're mixing the audio in these TV shows is um uh, kind of weird. You know, it's kind of the sound is just not right. It's right. also, and Alex. I, th I, I thought it was my hearing. And it no, is. no. I had the same thing, Paula. Yeah. T huh? TVs don't come with speakers anymore. They come with sound ribbons. And they, that's to get you to buy a sound bar. So unless unless you're in a small room, you've got to put the TV really loud to be able to hear the dialogue. But with a sound bar, you won't need it anymore. In a, no, what do you mean? Sound, we have sound bars. Yep. And and uh, still, you know, I find a lot of times, even with English shows, shows uh, when British shows, sometimes the, the, the it's thick, it's a thick accent, okay, and oh, yeah. it's hard to understand. Uh, but uh, even with American accents, we're finding that, and my hearing isn't going probably as bad as mine. Yes. Uh, that we just don't hear. We have we need the subtitles in order to, you know. I had to turn on the subtitles for this Canadian show called Shorzy, where they're all speaking a bunch of hockey players talking crap. If you don't have the subtitles on, you can't understand what the hell they're saying. It's funny as hell, but it's all it's all northern Canadian slang. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, uh, otherwise, I mean, uh, Marjorie, is there anything? We're, oh, yeah. So we watched 1923, which is very good. Uh, and uh, Taylor Sheridan has these three shows on the air all at the same time, and he writes most of the episodes. He's he's a he, he was originally an actor on uh, Sons of Anarchy, Sons of Anarchy, yeah. And he decided he was he didn't want to be an actor, he wanted to write and you know produce and so on. And so he started doing it, and he is maybe the biggest producer in television now. I mean, he had uh, Yellowstone. He had 1983. Um, 1983. 1883. 1983. 1923. Uh, Mayor of Kingstone. Uh, I'm trying to remember. There's one more show. And he's, he's just burning up the track. He's uh, They're also working on a Four Sixes uh, series. And he is the lead investor they just went and bought the four sixes ranch out of Texas for, I think it was $300 million. Um, yeah, we had uh, on, on my, my men's mental wellness podcast, I had Kim Coates on who played Kip and sons of anarchy. And we talked about Taylor and his, it was amazing. Cause he, 
they were paying him less than what he was worth. And he basically told Sons of Anarchy to go stuff it and went out and built this massive, massive empire uh, afterwards. And he took this situation where he was kind of, um, you know, kicked down. And he said, I'll show you what I can do. And now he's one of the most powerful people in entertainment. It's crazy. Well, he's the kind of guy that's totally bankable. If he raises yeah. and says, I have another show I want to do, they go, okay, here's the money. And they just start throwing it at him. We had a guy, in, Shecky and I were watching a lot. Uh, what's his name? Who did uh, Berlanti. Berlanti, Greg Berlanti. He must have had how many shows on at the same time? Maybe eight. Yeah. I mean, I think he was he was holding the record for the most shows. He had S Superman and Lois. He had uh, uh, Green Arrow. He had Supergirl. He had um, what are the other shows? The Flash. Archie. Huh? Archie. Archie. Yeah. Yeah. The over Riverdale. There. And then he also did some over at uh, at face um, uh, uh, Netflix. Uh, that uh, show. Uh, I think yours or your what, the thing where the guy is a, is a he kills his wife and it's a it's a sick it, it's a, not a sitcom but it's a drama every week about this guy who kills his wives and the lead character is a, is a is a serial killer uh he 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 was he was on he had everything going for him just everything all of a sudden somebody buys the cw where most of his shows landed and they said oh we got to save money here and so they knocked off most of his shows. But also many of them were on seven years, which is kind of the year when it's time to go. Yeah, but he would have kind of come up with new stuff and the old guys would have said, oh, yeah, here's a new show from. At one point, he had 50 percent of all the programming on the CW. Oh, crap. I mean, that's a lot, you know, and then a few other things going, too. So he was doing uh, Sabrina. On Netflix. Yeah. yeah, but again, he was the executive producer. He wasn't the director. He wasn't the writer. He just, you know. But he was the guy. All these it places. Was his factory. Were, no, but he was he. Yeah, but he was the guy that all these play these um, people like Netflix and so on and CW considered bankable, and so therefore, if he put his name on something, he did it. But and you probably how many here have heard of Greg Berlanti? Charlie and, and Mike, you know, see. So. And Charlene. Oh, heard Char the name. You've heard the I've name. Heard the name. Valenti. Okay. Um, but uh, anyway, Paula, you watching it? Well, you watched the Fableman and you, Fableman's, and you loved it. And I, yeah, I thought it was okay. I, I don't think it was great, but it was okay. I thought okay. Michelle Williams was incredible in it. I agree, and I also thought that 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 little cameo uh, with Judd Hirsch was was awfully good. Oh yeah, yeah, that's enough to get him nominated for an Academy Award. <laughs> you know, um, I love Judd Hirsch. Yeah, he he was terrific, but you know, it's an okay film. Yeah, it's a what? Okay film. Then we watched. Okay. Uh, what else did we watch? You watch the uh, what was it? The um, um, Oh, what is it? The, the thing with Viola Davis about the Afro oh, Queen, um, the, uh, the Warrior Queen, or something. Oh, yeah. How was that? I I think uh, it it's a movie. Uh, you never saw a movie about this subject. You never saw slavery from the sides of the people that were the slaves or becoming the slaves and how it was all being done and how one tribe would catch a bunch of warriors and then sell them to the slavers. And yes, Charlene. Well, I saw a documentary on that not too long ago. and It was really interesting. I haven't seen the movie, but the documentary was really great. Yeah. It was based on a real thing that happened. Mm -hmm. She's wonderful by all the Davis. I would see her doing anything. Yeah, and it it, it it I thought because it bespoke a certain part of history that we don't really know and don't show make movies about that it was interesting, you know, uh, and uh, um, so I, I that was pretty good. And then of course we had a whole bunch of films we watched that we really liked. I liked the, uh, the Senior, which is the documentary that Robert Downey Jr. did about his father, Robert Downey Senior. That was good. 
Oh, it's great. You know, I, and Robert Downey senior was a friend of mine. So I especially wanted to watch it. Marjorie, not so much. And then when she saw it, you thought it was terrific, right? Yeah, it was good. And then we saw this movie with, uh, um, what's her name? Um, Maybe I've mentioned this before. Uh, um, I'm trying to remember her name now called uh, Emily, the criminal. Oh Uh, yeah. um, Plaza. Um, Aubrey, is it Aubrey Plaza? I think is her name, the actress. Yeah, awesome. yeah, Aubrey. yeah. A, a great, a really great little film, you know. And uh, these are all on Netflix. And there was one other thing we saw on Netflix. Oh, and Pinocchio, of course, we love. Pinocchio was fantastic. Did you watch Pinocchio's Rick? Finally, I didn't hate it, but I didn't think it was God's gift to movie making. Well, I think it's kind of a classic. I really do. I think it's it's beautifully done. It's uh, the, the uh, it's very well done. Yeah, That's yeah. As far as I'll go. Well, I mean, Pinocchio was Pinocchio. You know, it wasn't like he. You know, yeah, although somebody I think is making, you know, a lot of these films that Disney originally did were all in public domain, so he didn't have to pay for the rights to. It. And in the case of uh, of uh, Pinocchio, I think it was it in public domain when he finally made the film. I believe it was. Yeah, and Snow White certainly was. And yeah, that's why he's remaking all these because he's got a way to get the not him personally, yeah. But the corporation has a way to get the copyright back to the basic plot. Yeah. So there's somebody who's taking a lot of those early Disney films and making them into horror films. And, you know, uh, uh, I know good. Ex- I I don't know if they've done Pinocchio yet, but they'll probably do Pinocchio as a serial killer. You know, uh, uh, they're they're having fun taking Disney and demystifying him completely. But, Wasn't that movie called Child's Play? Huh? I'm pretty sure that movie is called Child's Play. No, no, <laughs> yeah, but you're right. Uh, but I, uh, you know, I I just think it's. Uh, 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 there are a lot of the, we saw like three good things on Netflix, which amazed the living daylights out of me. And then you liked Harry and Megan, Marjorie. I did. My um, wife loved that too. You Absolutely. know, it's got an approval rating on, on Rotten Tomato. Where's all that audio gibberish coming from? Hold on a second. Let me turn it down. There we go. If I do that, it clears it up. Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, Harry and Megan. Harry and Megan. Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, it, 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 Rotten Tomatoes gave it 45, which is very low. Uh, Marjorie really... And again, why do we care what Rotten Tomatoes gives? Exactly. Yes, exactly. Well, I use that if as... If I like it, fine. If I don't like it, fine. Listen to this. So, Rick, have you seen Megan and uh, Harry? Harry and Megan? Absolutely not. See? Okay. So <laughs> that's, that's his review. <laughs> You liked it, Marjorie. I did. She's yeah. bright. She is very, very bright. And even before she met him, she was doing things uh, with the UN. Um, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she meant. showed up to, to um, lead the tour. The what? She showed up to lead tours. No, I'm no. Kidding. She was a spokeswoman at the UN. Yeah, and what does that mean? Explain to me what the UN does for this world. Well, they they bring on these people who are, do television and are known in television uh, to represent them in certain because they've got notoriety of, of some sort or another. She was on Suits, which is not great notoriety, but it nevertheless, it's, you know. But she but she also did a lot of other things too. So I mean, it, it, I don't. I think, but then again, the thing was meant to portray her positively. It wasn't meant to portray her. Well, they, they made it themselves, so of course it's going to be positive. Yeah, right. And, and at no at no point did it say this was based on a true story. So we don't know. Yeah, but it got picked up for another season. Did it really? <laughs> yes, yeah, today. How, wait a minute. They picked a, another season. Well, how does it go further than it went? money we'll yeah. pay you a couple of million dollars to do another season because it did so well for netflix or continue whoever the story yep. do you know how much they made for the first series a hundred million dollars really yes 
I wonder why Netflix is in bankruptcy right now. No, they're not in bankruptcy. Not wow. bankruptcy, but they're in a lot of debt right now. Oh, hey, the best story of the day. Elon Musk puts out a tweet yesterday, uh, maybe the day before, <laughs> saying, um, uh, do, you, do you think I, I should stay on as the head of, of Twitter? Yes or no. And I will abide by what you say. Yeah, yeah give me a call when he abides by what the yeah. vote yeah. went. Fifty-seven percent, over fifty-seven percent said we don't want you to be the head of Twitter. Yeah, watch how fast he walks away. I'm telling you, I think he will, and I'll tell you why. I think he's been looking for an excuse. I agree. You know, he's and this was his excuse. He knew probably how it would turn out. And it gives him a good excuse to just say, okay, well, I will hand the company over to somebody else who can also sure. and you know make money with it. And I will and I'll get back to making cars and sending people into he, space. He probably well, faked the vote to get that 57%. Uh -huh. yes. <laughs> he, uh, Andy Kaufman, Saturday Night Live all over again. Yeah, yeah. He sold a bunch of his Twitter, I'm sorry, uh Tesla stock. So yeah. he wants out of there too. And now yeah, he sold like four billion dollars of Tesla stock yeah. last week. And now he's going to take the forty-two billion he paid for Twitter and turn that into about a dollar ninety-eight. <laughs> and going. then sell superhero cards of himself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with stolen images. Well, we can't we can't forget his space program. Right now, up there uh, at uh, the our space station, or there, uh, uh, the Russians own part of it. Okay, uh, but the space station. I haven't no no I don't know if you've seen the pictures, but the Soyuz spacecraft they sent up there that was, has been docked in the space station is leaking something, and it's been spewing it out into space in great amounts, which means I don't know what it is, but they probably have a broken Soyuz rocket. That, that, is their, that is their escape module. So yeah. <laughs> oh, was that the escape module? Yeah, that's their escape. Uh, their extra. The one that they will use if in case something bad, really bad happens. So. Maybe maybe it has the same problem as Charlie's bathroom there. <laughs> <laughs> they also have the problem with the fact that there are six or seven people on the station and Soyuz holds three. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, no, it, it did hold three, but they kept adding on additions. I don't, I don't think the Soyuz capsule that's from the leak. Oh, more than three. Oh, oh, the Soyuz. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so the question is, how are the Russians going to get back? Yeah, exactly. And you know how they're going to no, get the back? the Russians don't care. You know how they're going to get back? Elon Musk. Well, probably, yeah. Yeah. Because they're sending up those, those SpaceX rockets every day. I mean, they're doing every day what we used to wait, you know, a year to do and say, okay, we're ready to send the rocket up. They're doing it every day. Now, yeah, I'm yeah. not saying this is all Musk. I think there are people running SpaceX who really know what they're doing, you know, and he hired the right people. Yeah. But I mean, right now they're sending up these, they're, they're, they're up above, they're, and a lot of people are complaining about it. They've sent up these Skylink satellites. Yeah. They're just ringing the globe. In fact, if you want if you want satellite coverage in uh, in Ukraine, you do use a Skylink, okay? So uh, he's sending those up every other day. Send you know it's just they throw them out like they're staples out of a staple. Hundred of them on each yeah. on each launch. So yeah. So now he, he's covering the globe. So I mean, all I'm saying is that he can send people up to you know go to the space station and bring people back plus his his uh, cabin can hold up to five people yeah so all you have to send is one of these things up with like two people running it and then <clears throat> take three back at a time so i mean that, that it, it's a case in which uh um he may be the savior of that space station meanwhile and we never hear much about it you know the chinese have a space station and supposedly it's a real modern space station. I don't know if you've seen our space station, but it looks like uh, oh, it could be on a uh, on an episode of Hoarders. Well, it's yeah. been up there for what twenty years? Huh? It's, it's been up there for twenty years. Yeah, and the Chinese? No. Oh, oh, ours? Oh, yeah. I mean, that thing should yeah, be at least you know closed down and new one put up. Does uh, does it have dining or just takeout? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, with 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 uh, with uh, two two arrivals, you get an egg roll. I don't know. Anyway, I thought Elon Musk uh, space capsule could uh, could be totally con uh, computer controlled, so they they don't really have to take two pilots up there to bring people back. They probably could just send it up like they send up their cargo units, and then you right. just hop in, go back to Earth. You know. Uh, and, uh, uh, starship, I think it's yeah. called starship. Yeah. Thing is, they've got the, the second, the second, um, um, section of the, of the uh, SpaceX rockets, uh, can come back to earth and land. And in that, at one point they were having trouble doing that. Now, every time they've landed 150 of those things, I mean, just there's, there's, you know. there's two boosters and both of them come back to earth. Yeah, land yeah. On a platform. I saw two of them landing at the same time. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Simultaneous touchdown. But I don't think they've been able to, to the nose capsule to have it come back and do that. Okay, it has to still land in water. Uh, you mean the, the, the passenger capsule? The passenger yeah, capsule. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it'd be nice if they could get those so they could land, you know, but they can't they can't do it. Uh but it, I mean I think, you know, I mean, um, Musk has started a business that really, he's, he's rolling those rockets out all the time. He's building them down there in Texas. He's got a factory and there may be like 20 waiting to get to a launch pad. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing what he's done. Meanwhile, NASA is sending up their rockets using the old shuttle rockets. Isn't that amazing? I mean, I the rockets that they were having trouble with this time and finally were able to send up to the moon and so on and so forth, that double thing was a, was from the space shuttle. And by the way, it doesn't land back on Earth. It lands in the water and they got to go fish them out. So, you know, I mean, uh, Musk has taken this whole thing and turned it into an assembly line, which is pretty good, pretty terrific. But anyway, so... So that I I don't. Would you people be around next Monday? I'm going to be on vacation. No, I'll be here. I'll, I'll, be, I'll here. be here. I'll be here. I'll be here. You be here, Shaggy? Mm. Oh yeah. Okay, then I plan on doing it. I'll plan on doing a show next uh, next week. What the hell? Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, uh, I'm not. I'm, we're taking the week off on Gabnet, but I don't mind doing this show because this is just. This is like hanging out with a bunch of old friends, and you know. You started this by saying you don't have any friends. <laughs> <laughs> You're shaky. Well, I have to say uh, I have one less. Uh, <laughs> oh no! Well, it, it, well, sometime we're going to have to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have to discuss what. Uh, what constitutes a friend? Because you know, people say, "Oh, so my friend so and so, my friend so and so, my friend so and so." But you know, isn't that cheapening what a friend is? I mean, I you know, I talk to Shecky at least once a week. That's the know. whole point of Facebook, right? <laughs> well, no, that yeah, right, yeah. I I have uh, I have uh, five thousand friends. Wow! I didn't realize that. I forgot about my five thousand friends at Facebook. One of and them only called, 400 sent you birthday wishes. Yeah. Right. So I, I approve some people who say they want to be a friend, right? And I get it like up to 5,000 because you can't go over 5,000. And I did one yesterday. And last night at, uh, what was it, 4 o'clock in the morning, my phone rings. What? <laughs> and I look at it and it's like a video. And I just, I, I didn't know who it was from. I never heard of the person. I, goodbye. So I wake up this morning. I find out it was somebody who tried to Facebook video me at four o'clock in the morning that I had just added as a friend, who, oh by the way, God. is no longer a friend. Now. <laughs> <laughs> and wow. it woke Marjorie up, woke me up. And, you know, and it was this funny ring because Facebook doesn't have a ring like a normal. Oh, phone. you didn't want to talk to the Philippines or. And I looked at it. She's a very attractive hooker. She yeah, really is. Tony. Yeah. I, I'm surprised Tony doesn't call you at four in the morning. Well, that's good. Well, does he have my phone number? Probably does, but he doesn't dare. 
doesn't dare. <laughs> I will literally take a uh, a lift out to Queens and kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen, it's been one. I love this show. I just love talking to you people. It's just nice. You know, it's just a bunch of people I like uh, hearing from, like Andrew Deutsch, who's this second week in a row you've been on with us. Um, At least. Yeah. Uh, Shecky, of course. You know, what can I say about Shecky? Uh, <laughs> also, Charlene. Thank you, Charlene. Always nice seeing your face here. Paula? Uh, days, well, everybody. I won't be. I won't be here next week, but I'll be here the next week. Oh, what, celebrating Christmas, you Jew! <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's the final night of Hanukkah, just, probably. Just leave it there, right? <laughs> my birthday. My birthday fell on the first night of Hanukkah. Yeah. I went by some street where the street was blocked off and everything. Marjorie noticed it. Well, it's probably for Hanukkah. And all I could think of with my ego was they're all there celebrating my birthday. Right. <laughs> uh, Marjorie, thank you. Um, what's for dinner tonight? <laughs> what's for dinner tonight? Whatever you're making, Alex. <laughs> the, little, the little woman is cooking dinner for us tonight. <laughs> Did she pick up the phone again and order out? Charlie Wallace, thank you so much for being here. Vernon Nunn, thank you. Mandy, I don't know what happened to Mandy. She probably had business to do. She's working away. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But if you can hear us, Mandy, we love you. Okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, and Len LaFrisco, thank you. And thank you to uh, Mike Chisholm. And finally, we have Edward Berger, who will sign us off That's by saying... Right. This will have to last for two weeks, because I'm not going to be here next week. That's all, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, have a nice week. We'll see you. Thank we'll you. do it Happy next birthday. week. Just for the hell of it. Okay. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>